Welcome to Safety for Professionals Conducting Home Visits. I'm Sharon Wisdom, a parent educator who retired after 27 years of providing parents as teacher services for the Hannibal Public School District. Joining me today is Ronnie Burnham, who has career experiences in law enforcement, parent education, and nursing. Currently, Ronnie is a mental health RN employed by a women's correctional facility. Let's talk about today's intent. Our purpose is to help you be as safe as you could be when you are providing services within a family's home. Each home visiting situation is unique, requiring providers to form individualized strategies for dealing with potentially volatile situations. Ronnie and I will provide you with generalized strategies that may be of use to you before, during, and while exiting home visits. Equally important, we encourage you to take some time, both during this presentation and following, to reflect on how you may need to individualize them for situations in which you may find yourself. No one can prepare for every given situation. Sometimes challenges arise to our personal safety even if we do everything in our power to prevent them. This presentation intends to give you the tools to minimize the hazards to your safety and, if they occur, to maximize a positive outcome. Let's take a look at that first step in facilitating your safety, preparation. Preparing for the visit. First off, know where you are going. Take some time to look the situation over before you find yourself within it. Drive by the location of a visit or, if distance makes that not feasible, at least take a look on an online map. Using your safety skills is vital in all neighborhoods at all homes, so check out any possible hazards before. Is there construction in the area that will complicate travel? If the visit is rural, can you easily find the landmarks you were given? Are the roads passable in your type of vehicle? Plan for parking. Plan to park in an area where you're not likely to be blocked in. Back into parking if possible. If you're on a cul-de-sac, then park facing the exit. Plan ahead for where you will go if you find yourself in danger. Is there a well-lit, populated area nearby, something like a gas station or a police substation? What route will you take to get there? You don't want to find yourself trapped on a dead-end street if you're leaving a compromising situation hastily. Preparing for the visit. Think about what you'll wear on your visit. Dress for safety, not fashion and be able to move quickly. You want to wear shoes in which you can run and clothes which don't constrict your movements. Don't wear expensive jewelry and consider how your attire may impact your safety. Scarves and ponytails and lanyards can all be grasped by a person and used to facilitate an attack. Clothing or jewelry that states religious, political, or other affiliations may serve as an unintended trigger or a barrier to rapport and provoke an aggressive or even violent response in some people. Preparing for the visit. Always have your professional ID easily accessible. If you can have it available on your clothing where it's easily in sight, that's optimal. Remember, if law enforcement enters the home, you need to be able to identify yourself and your purpose in that home. 
preparing for the visit. There are some things you need to ask yourself as you prepare for each and every visit. Because each visit is unique, each home is unique, you need to think these through before you actually go into the field. Are you aware of the family's needs and living conditions? How many people live in that home? What are their relationships to each other? You may not need to know the details of these things, but you need to know generalities that may impact your role as a home visitor. Are you aware of any guest techniques needed for your visit? Are you expected to take your shoes off? Do you know which door that you're expected to use? The front door, the back door, the side door? Are you aware of the community? The families that live around the visiting family are important as well. What are some potential triggers? You need to think ahead. If someone's recently lost their job, if there's a health crisis, these things can cause stress within a family and potential volatility. Do you need to take someone with you on the visit? Of course you'd need to ask the family's permission before you brought someone along, but sometimes it's safer just to have two on a visit. Do keep in mind if you take someone with you, they need to come into the home visit with you rather than sit in the car. Sitting in the car can make them a potential target. Should you hold this visit in a neutral location? Sometimes the family may welcome the possibility of holding the visit in a neutral place rather than within the home. Take of all these things into consideration. Preparing for the visit. Here are some more things to ask yourself as you prepare for that visit. What boundaries will I establish with the family? Are they the same as the boundaries I establish with every other family I visit? How will I do that? Will I state them clearly on the first visit? Will I provide written information? Be clear in your own mind what your boundaries are so that you can share them effectively. What will you do if someone crosses a boundary? Sometimes those incursions across our boundaries are tests. If I don't object to a small incursion over my boundary, it may escalate. On the other hand, do I make exceptions if I would lay down a boundary and it's a special case? How much personal information will I share? Do I talk about my children, my spouse, where I live? What if someone asks me to connect on social media? Does your employer have a policy on this issue? How will you reply? What if someone asks me to a social event? What if you're asked to the birthday party for the child or a baby shower? Thinking ahead how you respond and what your boundaries are will make it easier for you to share them effectively. Preparing for the visit. Here are some more things to consider. What will I do if I don't feel safe on that visit? We talked about you planning for your safe place to go. How will you get there? What will you say to the family? What's your exit strategy? You need to have that in place before you ever set foot in that home. Who will you notify once you have an issue? That once you leave, do you go to your safe place to call? Do you call when you're on the way? These are things to think about. What will I do if I'm hurt? Does my employer have policies on any of these issues? It could be as simple as you sprain your ankle, or perhaps it's a dog bite. Am I expected to call my employer before I go to a specific health care provider? These are things to know before you're actually in these situations. Preparing for the visit. Always leave a trail. Make sure someone knows where you're going, when you're expected to return, 
and what to do if you are late. Consider taking your phone into the visit with you. If it's muted, it won't disturb your time with the family, but it is a resource for you to call for help. Consider this. Your phone must be on in order for law enforcement to be able to ping it to determine your whereabouts, just in case you happen to find yourself in that worst case scenario. Consider setting a code word or a phrase with your office so you can notify them if you are in need of assistance without alerting those about you. Preparing for the visit. Here are some numbers you may wish to program into your phone. Being prepared is key. Of course you could always look them up online, but if you have them in your phone, you will be able to access them much more quickly in a high stress situation. For example, emergency response. In some rural areas, the 911 is not available. So you need to know who will you call if you have an issue. In case of emergency or ICE is a good entry to make into your phone. If someone finds your phone, then they know who to call on your behalf. Numbers for police, fire, your supervisor, ambulance. We discuss the importance of choosing parking carefully. Consider what will you do if your vehicle doesn't start when you return to it after the visit? Are you safe to remain with it while you call a towing company whose number you have in your phone or a taxi? Or is it safer for you to return to the family's home as you wait for those people to come to give you assistance? Now that we've covered preparation for the visit, Ronnie will take us through the visit itself. Arriving at the visit. Make sure that your valuables are out of sight before you arrive. This may include a laptop, an iPad, or even loose change in view in the console area. Be aware of your surroundings and others that are present in the area. You may want to scan the area and ask yourself, do things look right? It's important to trust your gut feeling and this does take practice. A gut feeling is an intuition or an understanding of a situation without knowing specific data at that time. Examples of gut feelings may be in the form of having increased feelings of anxiety, queasiness in your stomach, a nagging feeling, or even feeling a bit unsettled. Now logic is an analytic reasoning which is not part of the intuitive process. It is better to trust your gut feeling than to lean on logic alone and get in an unfortunate situation. It is always okay to reschedule if a situation is not safe. Safety should always outweigh schedules. If people are present outside the home, you'll want to make eye contact with them as well, letting them know that you see them and to acknowledge that they see you. You may want to speak or offer a wave hello. This may help you build rapport with them. Don't forget to check for any threatening animals. And if you do feel threatened, with your cell phone, call your family's residence to ask for their assistance. Let's move on to during the visit. You'll want to pay attention to your positioning throughout the visit. For example, follow the greeter rather than you allowing them to walk behind you. This allows you to scan your environment as well as pay attention to the body language that may be present or the demeanor inside the home. Don't forget to be mindful of your own body language. As you enter the home, you'll want to note who is present inside the home and remember to include this piece in your documentation. 
This is a great opportunity to build rapport by acknowledging everyone who is present as well as showing a level of respect for the family as a unit. During the visit, you'll want to look for exits in case an emergency route is needed. You'll want to avoid sitting with your back toward an entrance or an exit way, as well as maintaining an open path to these areas. It's important to be aware of what's going on in other rooms. Get into the habit of using your peripheral vision throughout your visit. This means not allowing yourself to have tunnel vision as you conduct your home visits. This brings us toward the end of our visit. Exiting the visit. When preparing to leave your visit, you'll want to have all of your materials in one bag. This prevents you from fumbling and allows you to be attentive when approaching your vehicle. You'll want to make sure that you have your keys in one hand, which could also be used as a small weapon if needed. As you approach your vehicle, take notice of others who may be standing around or parked nearby. Take a moment to look inside or around your vehicle. Think to yourself, has anything changed since you left your vehicle? When getting into your vehicle, you'll want to place your bag beside you instead of in the trunk. Don't let your guard down yet. Fumbling in your trunk really reduces your visibility and it places you in a very vulnerable position. Ending the visit is just as important as arriving to the visit safely and conducting the home visit safely. Exiting the visit. Think about how it would make you feel if you had a professional just leave your home and you saw them getting into their car, hanging around, writing things down, or on the telephone immediately after leaving from their visit. Another thing to consider is this really places you in a vulnerable position of not being attentive to what's going on around you. If you feel the need to make important notes so you don't forget, consider using a voice activated recorder as you're driving away from the home. You'll want to drive to a safe place before you make any calls or before doing paperwork. After the visit, take some time to reflect. This is a very important piece. Consider these questions. Did I feel safe at all times? What worked well? What will I do different? Do I need to take someone with me or change the appointment? How about meeting at a different location? This helps us connect the past to help prepare for future visits. This is a good time to practice what would you do with scenarios. Practicing helps the brain to recognize how to problem solve during times of stress or times of anxiety. This skill takes practice and will develop over time the more you do it. There's a link available for your use that contain actual situations that have occurred on home visits. Take some time to consider these after the conclusion of this presentation. Here are a few examples to get you started. And please keep in mind that although some of the responses seem like common sense to you, it may not to someone else. Scenario number one, what would I do if several people are leaving and entering the home while I am conducting a home visit? Would you ignore these visitors to avoid distracting from your purpose of the visit? Or would you practice some of the tips you learned in this presentation? Greet and acknowledge newcomers. 
Watch for body language between the visitors and family, taking cues to reschedule or even conclude the visit. Simply ask the family what they feel comfortable doing. Remember to include interactions in your documentation. Scenario number two. What would I do if? During a home visit, I hear a loud knock at the door and a voice shouting, Police! Open up! Everyone inside the home scrambles for a hiding spot. Would you run into another room? Would you freeze in place? Or would you practice some of the tips you learned in this presentation? Have your professional ID visible on your clothing. Be still and follow directions from law enforcement and not the family. Let's try a final scenario. What would I do if? During a home visit, the child's father tells me that his wife has recently left and is seeking a divorce. He would like to continue services for the child. The father mentions several times throughout the visit that he is lonely. Would you ignore his statements or would you practice some of the tips you learned in this presentation? Be confident and set boundaries immediately. State your purpose for services and keep focus on the child. You may want to consider an approach such as, Mr. Jones, I can tell that you're going through a really rough time because you've mentioned several times that you're lonely. Well, this makes me feel uncomfortable. I would like for us both to feel comfortable at the visit, so we need to stay focused on your child. Consider taking someone with you on your next visit. Consider conducting the visit in a neutral location outside the home. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to consider this very important topic that may sometimes feel uncomfortable if we look at it too closely. It may seem a paradox, but by considering the ways in which we may be unsafe, we really move a bit more toward a secure future. In summary, we want to take time to be informed, take the time to be well prepared, stay actively alert, and always be safe. Thank you for joining us for this presentation.